Uh, good morning, my name is Jesus Salcedo. Today, this is a presentation of the Simmer 88-1500. It's a turning quest system. Uh, today, I'm gonna cover a little overview about the equipment, uh, some calibration, troubleshooting, and a little hands-on training to understand calibration and troubleshooting of the unit. Uh, first, what is a tourniquet system? First, back in the old days, you will find like a little stick attached to a rope, and when you put it into one of your limbs, you start rotating the stick, and that will stop your um, your blood flow, you know, to go into uh, different parts of your body when you want it to stop, so you can uh, avoid any um, hemorrhage, or if you want to perform like an incision or surgeries. But with technology and um, advances of medicine, doctors start performing surgeries, specifically orthopedic surgeries. So to have um, bloodless area that they can work, uh, they come out with these equipment with their pneumatic uh, based on pumps, so they can stop their, uh, they can control the blood in the areas that they want to perform or they want to start doing the surgeries. Nice. How pretty much they work through the uh, through this place they can analyze the pressure that they need to apply. So for the uh, the keys that they have the instrument, they can adjust pressure up to the point to avoid any tissue damage because of the pressure that they apply. They can set up a time for the pressure. So when they set up the time, the uh, microcontrollers in the unit analyze the timer they analyze the, uh, the pressure that they have and they set up the set points in the, in, in the microcontrollers and they release pressure through a pump to the uh, parameters that the surgeon or the uh, medical practitioner set up for the patient. Simple like that. And then when they're done with the procedure, well, they start releasing the pressure little by little because you don't want like something like um, veins to burst or, you know, like blood coming like really fast. Some of the features of this unit, this unit is very simple, doesn't require major training, uh, except uh, good knowledge of the pressure that has to be applied you know, to the limb or the uh, extremity that they want to, um, that they need to perform the surgery. It's a very intuitive. Uh, you can see you have like a pressure settings, time alarms, the keys are very easy to use. Uh, you can inflate or deflate uh, one of the main cups or the secondary cup. I mean, there's no major training involved in this one. If, they, if uh, you don't want to hear the alarm, well, there is an alarm silence uh, button, which is the right one, and it will stop the sound completely. Very accurate, because after you set up the pressure, the unit has uh, plus or minus uh, five millimeters mercury for the um, indifference on the pressure that you apply. And when you calibrate, the manufacturer suggests like a plus minus six millimeters mercury during the calibration process, just to have more accuracy during your procedure or your surgical procedures. And it's an easy access. When you take these two screws on the right and the other two screws on the left, pretty much the whole unit will open. And you can perform, you know, calibration troubleshooting is something that we'll see in a little while. For calibration, two of the major uh, points are the common mode and the transducer offset that we're gonna see when we open the equipment, pretty much you hook it up um, Calibration kit. It's pretty much a calibration uh, measuring device with a little pump that you connect with a T connector to the two inner tubings that you will see that coming out of the pump. 
after you uh, initiate the calibration mode, uh, you press um, inflate for the main cut, so the unit will start adding pressure. The pressure has to be equal to the pressure that you have in your um, calibration measuring device. For example, if you set up to 250, and your calibration de device has to be the same pressure 250. If the pressure, if there is a difference between those two, you pretty much start yeah. adjusting one potentiometer that is inside until both of the readings match the value that you look. <coughs> physical inspection. Every other six months, the manufacturer recommend a physical inspection. Inspection, sorry and the exterior and the interior, pretty much uh, no rust, a clean of dust, especially because through this hole there is a ventilation of the unit to uh, avoid overheating. Uh, condition of the connectors where the cap are connected through the tubings. Condition of the tubings, no cracks, no dryness, so it can uh, guarantee um, uh, accuracy in the unit. For the troubleshooting, uh, loss of power, one of the main reasons that it can be first because uh, the cables attached to the power supplies are in bad condition or because one of the fuses just it's, uh, you know, blow out. Uh, when you have no indicators on, or tones, there's a series of steps that we're going to see on the hands-on training. Um, that's coming pretty much because of the alarms and all the uh, displays that you can see in the equipment or in the unit, as you can see here. Uh, if the cuffs does not inflate or do not inflate, most of the times and most likely, uh, one of the reasons are the tubings, the connectors, and then one of the uh, microcontrollers that is attached to one of the valves that you know, follows the, uh, the pressure through the valve. Now we're going to start with the hands-on training, and I invite everybody to open the, the unit. 